Hello, dear classmates. Welcome to the VLSI testing class. Today we are going to introduce a particular force simulation technique called concurrent force simulation. Today's lecture is based on a textbook, VLSI Test Principles and Architectures by Professor Wang Wu and Wen. The idea of concurrent force simulation has been proposed as early as 1974. The idea of concurrent force simulation is actually very simple. Our observation of force simulation is that fault activity is often sparse, both in time and space. For example, given this faulty circuit, consider the fault G stuck at zero. The fault effect only a small portion of this circuit. So the question is that can we just simulate this small portion of the circuit? That could save us a lot of simulation time. So actually, a concurrent force simulator is an event-driven simulator with good and bad events together. Before we start, we need to know the difference between good gate and bad gate. In concurrent force simulation, for every good gate, we have a list of back gates associated with it. For example, in this circuit, G2 is a good gate, which has one back gate associated with it. A back gate represents full effect of a fault. Please know that at least one gate input or gate output different from its corresponding good gate if this fault is present. For example, this back gate is denoted by the fault ID and the faulty input and output value associated with this fault. If A is stuck at 1, then this upper input will be 1 instead of 0. Consider this test pattern, which is 0, 1, 0. We perform a fault free simulation on the good circuit. We can see that good events are those events that occur in a good circuit. So this slide shows nothing new. This is a very simple event-driven simulation for a good circuit. So now consider three faults in this circuit which are A stuck at 1 for J stuck at 0 for and C stuck at 0 for. The good gates are painted in white in this figure and the bad gates are painted in gray. There are A stuck at 1, J stuck at 0 and C stuck at 0. A bad gate is invisible if its faulty output are the same as good values. For example, J stuck at 0 is invisible, C stuck at 0 is also invisible because their values are identical as their good value. However, A stuck at 1, 4 is visible because 
one of its input value is different from the good circuit. So we know that the back gate of A stuck at 1 4 is now visible. Bad events are events in the faulty circuit which are different from good events. Good events can activate both good gates and bad gates for evaluation. However, bad events only activate bad gates of the same fault for evaluation. Please note that only events of visible bad gate will be propagated. Invisible bad gates will not trigger any bad event. For example, in this circuit, good events are marked in white. Bad events is shown in gray color. For example, this is a bad event associated with A stuck at 1 4. So the output of G2 will be 1 if A is stuck at 1. Bad gates diverge from its input gate if its multi input or output values are different from good events. For example, for this good gate G4, we have one back gate diverge from G4 because its input value here is different from the good value. So this new back gate appears or diverge from the circuit. The divergence of this bad gate also triggered one bad event which is output k uh, changing from u to 0. So we detect a stuck at 1 4 by pattern p1 because uh, the output value of a good circuit and bad circuit are different. So let's move on to the second pattern, P2. In this pattern, B is changed from 1 to 0 and the C is changed from 0 to 1. Those are two good events. We see that C stuck at 0, bad gate is now newly visible. Because its output value is different from <coughs> a good value. So we have three back gates diverge from the circuit. And now we can detect C stuck at 0, 4 by P2. Of course, A stuck at 1, 4 is also detected by P2. Please note that although A stuck at 1, 4 has already been detected by pattern P1, this stuck at 4 is not dropped for our demonstration purpose. Now suppose we applied the third pattern P3. Input C is now changed from 1 to 0. And A is changed from 0 to 1. For this new pattern, we see that some bad gates disappear or converge to its good gate 
if its 40 IO values become the same as good values. For example, this back gate C stack at 0 disappear because its input values or output values are now identical as the those values in the good circuit. So this packet is is not needed anymore. Similarly, this packet also disappear. This is disappear. And the A stuck at one also disappear. On the other hand, J stuck at zero is now visible, which trigger new bad events and the divergence of this back gate. We can propagate this bad event to the primary output and we detect this for J stuck at zero by pattern three. So this is the whole concurrent for simulation flow. Uh, this is basically uh, the same as an event-driven simulation. At the beginning, given a full list F, we apply a new pattern to the circuit. We analyze the event at gate inputs and uh, execute the event. We compute event at the gate output. The only thing that is different is that we consider all both bad events and the good events in the concurrent simulation. If there is there are still unsimulated event, we go move back to here. Otherwise we finish this test pattern and uh, we delete the detective 4 from F. This is for dropping. If there are still unsimulated 4 in the full list, we will go back to apply the next pattern. Otherwise, we end this full simulation. In summary, concurrent full simulation is a fast for simulation technique which can handle delay fault and sequential for simulation. However, there is one bad thing about concurrent for simulation that is the memory management problem. Because the memory requirement cannot be predicted in advance, so we don't know how much memory we should locate allocate it at the beginning of the simulation. Now, this is your time for discussion. I will give you three questions to think about. Question 1. In pattern P2, we have this figure. Can you tell me why there are no bad events here? and here. Question number two. Why delay fault is supported by concurrent fault simulation? And the question number three. Why sequential fault simulation can be supported by concurrent fault simulation? I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Thank you.